This may look familiar. I've often thought about what our schools and classrooms say about us. And we spend countless hours in these environments. They shape who we are in many ways and I've just personally had taken a lot of time to think about what some of my dream spaces would be um, learning environments and um, have you ever thought about what you would do if you could design your own school or classroom? What would it look like? What would you put in it? What would it feel like? What kind of community would you want to build? And that's some of the questions that I've been asking myself um, along the way. We have the potential to dream of something that is completely different or something that's better. So when we come together, we can think and, you know, be collaborative and come up with unique and interesting ideas of how we want to move forward, how we want to build our schools. I feel like this should be a bit of a process of dreaming and thinking about what really works for our students and what works for teachers and parents and how can we build a learning community that supports everyone. It's great to take a moment to draw or sketch or write about some of the things that come to mind when you think about your dream classroom or school. On this journey, I've learned so much about myself and um, what I'm capable of and just how many different like ideas and perspectives are out there and how um, change and growth is possible. And um, I've had to push myself a lot through this journey and process to try new things to get outside of my comfort zone and that has been such a, a big thing for me. I had the opportunity to sit and learn from so many um, amazing and unique and really special people who are doing some incredible work trying to move things forward and to help put together some of the different pieces that um, we are trying to to build kind of this mosaic of different experiences and it's so amazing to see the people who are already doing um, this work out there and it is really inspiring for 
someone like me, so I just want to continue building and growing from this um, experience. And I, over the course of the last year, have learned so much from the people around me, but also through being more open-minded minded and curious and learning from my natural surroundings. Um, spending a lot more time outdoors and um, allowing myself to discover more about, about who I am and what I'm capable of and um, trying to reintegrate myself into my surroundings. I think especially after the pandemic of um, spending so much time at home and being a bit isolated it is good to get out and to kind of sit amongst the trees and to spend some time reflecting um, and outdoors is a space where I'm able to do that and I know that there's so many benefits to being and learning outside and that's why I wanted to create this project because for me it was incredibly life-changing and I wanted to show a bit of this personal journey also sharing a little bit of the research and some of the ideas that are behind um, outdoor education and land-based learning and I know that there is so much more to explore and to learn and I'm going to continue doing that for sure it's uh it's been quite a an amazing personal journey and I'm glad that I got to capture and share that with with everyone moving forward like for me personally and kind of my hope for schools in the future and down the road is that we start to slow down a little bit in our lives and there's kind of this concept of slow living and um, there's many different cultures that have different um, words and um, ideologies and kind of viewpoints and perspectives on what this can look like but we really do need to start taking care of our mental health and our well-being and practicing more mindfulness. Um, it's just so critical in our schools that we're able to create confident and capable students who um, believe in themselves, who um, want to make the world a better place and have hope and optimism and, you know, just that desire to be a lifelong learner. One of the main things I've learned is that um, just how space contributes to the conversation and how we kind of need to diversify um, kind of our just the learning environment and reshaping what that looks like what that feels like um, there are so many different ways that we can shape and and create environments that foster learning and there's just like so much research that tells us um, of the, all the different things that you can do and uh, there's just like there's a lot of information out there um, I like that it gives us the opportunity to maybe dream a little bit about what the spaces can look like I've spent a lot of time thinking and dreaming about what schools can be. Um, it has really allowed me to kind of come up with some different and unique ideas and I've spent some time sketching what these spaces could look like and for my dream school obviously it's outside, it's very flexible, um, it creates spaces for students to collaborate and to connect but also gives them the room to um, explore and be creative and you know come up with some ideas and perspectives on their own and in some ways be guided by their surroundings and allow for the outdoors and nature to kind of be the third teacher um, I want to be learning as much from 
students as they are from me and well in many ways even more so um, learning from them and um, I kind of want to learn from them I want them to learn from me but I also want them to learn from their communities and so um, that and that involves having guests uh, into the classroom but it also involves um, having um, just kind of changing up the environment and the space and allowing the environment to be a teacher as well and that's a huge huge part of this. In a lot of these sketches I've kind of allowed myself to just dream a little bit about what the physical space can look like and even outdoors um, what those different types of spaces can look like and what it looks like when it's filled with um, students who are sketching and exploring and reflecting um, and interacting with each other but also interacting with their surroundings and it's been such a fun thing to allow myself to dream and to be a little bit creative again um, and to think about how without kind of, you know, certain limitations and, and previous experiences and viewpoints of what a classroom should look like, it's been kind of neat to allow myself to expand a little bit more on how these spaces can be maybe thought of a little differently. They can be more open, more uh, mindfully constructed and it's been a lot of fun. It's been an interesting, neat little practice and just um, just allowing myself to unlearn a lot of the things that I thought about schools um, and relearning um, some things about how we can kind of change and switch things up from kind of the traditional thinking of what a classroom and a learning environment is supposed to look like. Um, some of these spaces already exist as schools and so it's not an entirely new concept. Um, there are Montessori classrooms, there are Reggio classrooms, there are so many different environments and so it's kind of neat to explore some of those and integrate some of those um, perspectives into what I've been trying to do with, with this series and so um, even here in Calgary and Alberta, and in Alberta, we have outdoor schools, we have outdoor classrooms, we have learning spaces that are maybe challenging and look a little bit differently than um, traditional classrooms with desks and rows and that sort of thing. And, and even something as simple as changing up seating or, you know, spending um, a, a percentage or chunk of your day um, taking your class outside to an outdoor learning environment and there's a lot of schools that do have um, spaces outside where they have gardens and rocks and different things that students can sit and reflect and I just think that there are so many benefits to that and that's something that um, I think it would be great if we saw more of that that can be like a really important powerful um, thing to change um, so it's just really cool that some of these spaces already exist but I would really want to encourage us to think more about how we can kind of maybe challenge some of the um, I guess traditional slash industrial ways of thinking about our schools and also incorporating different ideas and perspectives I think that this is one of the most important components is that idea of connecting and um, we need to allow time and space for students to connect with their teachers, with their peers, with nature, with their surroundings um, and build positive interactions and experiences with our surroundings. It's important because we need to build environmental stewards who are capable of 
taking care of our planet that comes with having a um, positive uh, relationship and those experiences with our natural surroundings and um, we can learn a lot from the relationships that we see in nature and we kind of need to model a lot of the things that that we see in nature and it has been a really long journey for me and this has been a period in my life where things are very fresh and um, you know this project kind of serves a bit as a time capsule for me um, and it has just really accumulated and, and has grown into becoming a bit of a reflective piece and how I want to move outdoor education um, towards becoming more of a common practice um, in like classrooms and schools and maybe one day building more outdoor schools and having that be a part of our public education even um, and expanding current you know projects and field trips and spaces that we can all share and build and grow communities and so um, I just want to think about where I can incorporate this into my practice and hopefully encourage other people to think about the same the same thing and um, you know constantly asking ourselves where can we do better what else can we learn um, there's so much literature research books videos so many things of different ideas and, and listening, allowing ourselves to be a listener and um, accepting um, different things outside of our, our Western world views. And so it's just, it's a huge process and I personally want to continue growing. I want to continue reading and experimenting and exploring and expanding on different ideas. I hope that this series was able to maybe challenge some things that you might not have ever thought about or made you think maybe in a different way um, or to even know that outdoor education is a possibility for um, us to incorporate more into our you know our current schools and education landscape and maybe be a potential future for our schools and classrooms and um, who knows in the next few years we might see this be a more common thing and um, be able to incorporate in more in many ways there's so many possibilities um, the possibilities are, are really endless with this idea and framework and I could have touched on so many more things throughout this series and I hope that I'm able to continue this journey and sharing this um, beyond this series so I just really want to thank everyone who who turned in um, who helped me during this time and process in my life and um, it's been such a treat to allow myself this time to grow and to to think and so it's been it's been really great so I hope that we can get out there and make a difference and just maybe restructure a little bit about how we how we view education and how we can work towards building a, a system that fosters and inspires and shapes lifelong learners who um, who are able to go out in the world and, and make a difference. So.